Michael's idea, which is what the show be became, was that when you're in the ER as a physician, you're overtaxed, no stories have real strong, obvious conclusions. You, what you think is going to be what takes your entire evening doesn't. What um, you think the outcome is going to be isn't. And most importantly, people die. And that was the real problem with NBC. Is they, they literally gave me a whole thing of research that said, we did a lot of research that said nobody wants to see anybody dead in a hospital. Why would they go? And Michael's point and my point was that people actually know that people die in hospitals. <laughs> and you're going to be more comforted if you're in a world in which you know that it's real. And it's, it seems like such, you know, we did 354 hours of VR. So it feels completely ridiculous that anybody would think that that was revolutionary television. But at the time, the storytelling, the way we were telling 20 stories, 18 stories, 22 stories in, in you know, an hour television show was really revolutionary. Characters died, people that you thought were going to be important you never saw again. Uh, we went out of our way to cast actors that you thought you knew and then barely used them. And we would warn them about that and tell them we'd bring them back. One of the experiences, and John Young and I have talked about this a lot, so I won't, uh, I'm not saying things out of school, but he directed a lot of the China beaches. And it became really difficult because when he was off directing, everything would kind of stop while he directed. And so I had, and it created a lot of problems. I mean, he's a wonderful director and he was doing a great job directing, but for the writing of the series, it would, we would kind of slow to a stop and Warner Brothers would scream and yell and so I decided on ER that we would, uh, that I would not do that for a while until it really got going. And because I'd been trained as a director and I always sort of really thought that's what I was going to be doing. Um, <clears throat> but the style of the show was realistic and what people responded to because we'd had to shoot in this real hospital in this very real style of shooting. Um, that's what people responded to when we tested it and showed it to audiences. They said, I, I, this is just, I just feel like I'm really right there. And there wasn't a lot of reality television on. There wasn't this sort of sense that you had that much uh, access to um, documentary style footage. And because we made it messy and the camera got bumped and we used very few dollies and it just had that whole sense of it. So we wanted to repeat that when we built the set. So we enlarged the hallways a little bit because some of it was so tight that we couldn't actually get around. And then the, uh, the lighting was just all built into the ceilings. and. I sort of warned everybody, on all the actors, I said, you know, we're just going to turn on basically overheads. You're not going to see a lot of flags. You're not going to see a lot of bounce cards. You're not going to see it. We're not going to try and make this pretty. Uh, all of you are very pretty to begin with, so you can stand it. You can stand up to it. But you also need to be prepared that because we won't be lighting, we won't be taking a lot of time. So you need to come to the set fully off book ready to go because there's not going to be like go back to your trailer and learn the lines for an hour. Um, and so that created this sort of ethos on the set between the way it was lit and we would literally go into rooms and turn on the light. They had faders for them and some in the DPs would after uh, Tom left, Del Ruth left, we could like reduce a little bit in the background of the foreground but it was still just what it was. Um, and uh, and because of that kind of going fast because the actors in the, the the actors started to really get into this idea that it was really like theater that they were going to come to the set they were going to have a little bit of time to rehearse it, and then we were just going to shoot uh, mistakes and all and we'd had a lot of mistakes and we didn't try to make anything perfect and so the that added to this sense of sort of the chaos of the moment in the place so you felt there was a certain amount of danger to it and and that and some of that danger was the fact that it was a little dangerous i mean <laughs> People got banged into and hit and lines got dropped and poor extras or, you know, would come in and get slammed into and, the you know, people who had one line, well, I would warn them in the casting, I would say, you got to know that line, I'm telling you, you think it's going to be cool and you think it's no big deal because you have just one line, but I promise you, we'll probably be at the end of a four minute single camera take and then it'll come to you and you got to say that line and you're going to freak out. <laughs> and it happened a lot. Like people would get right to the end and go, oh, there's the camera. Oh, dear God, no. And it's like, Ugh. So, but it created this ethos on the set of this challenge for the actors. And then that filtered back into the writer's room where we were able to write longer and longer episodes. I mean, we were shooting 84 page scripts for like, you know, 46, 47 minutes. And all of it was ending up on screen um, because it was that fast paced. So it created this kind of loop of realistic work, 
where everybody was really challenged and it led to us actually even doing a live show which for most things would have been really challenging the only challenges were technical it wasn't for the actors we were doing that virtually every day on the set anyway